Okay. Uh, I think we are in quite good schedule. So as I mentioned, take home message one related to geodata frames was this geometry column. And then take home message two is the coordinate reference system. So we will now continue with the second part of this lesson, which is not super long, but contains maybe heavy, heavy material. So now this zero two projections notebook. Mm, we will continue from there. Mm, and for this lesson, you will need uh, a data layer that should be available in this lesson to data folder that we downloaded at the start of the lesson that contains European borders uh, as a shape file. So we will be reading that data in and checking, checking the projections. Uh, so, uh, coordinate reference systems uh, contain the defi definitions how we link these uh, coordinates, so x, y coordinates, latitude, longitude coordinates, to actually physical locations on the Earth. Last week we were handling these shapely geometries, but without a coordinate reference system, they are just abstract geometries. With the, if we refer then uh, link those coordinates to locations on the Earth using a map projection, uh, then we can actually uh, start analyzing geographic phenomena using these geometric objects. Mm, quick introduction to coordinate reference systems. So we can have geographic coordinate si reference systems that operate uh, on a sphere or kind of on the surface of the Earth, some approximation of it. So for, for example, latitude and longitude coordinates, we, ha we are on some latitude and then on some longitude uh, in relation to the poles and then the equator and then the uh, kind of zero uh, longitude from Greenwich. Or then we can have projected coordinate systems uh, that then try to represent our uh, globe that is somewhat round and put that uh, on a flat surface. And if you try to peel, peel uh, an orange and put that as a flat, uh, flat thing on the paper, it might be difficult. So then the, there is a lot of, lot of math and a lot of calculation that then goes into representing the earth uh, on a two dimensional map. And then, for example, if we have Finland, then we can have quite accurate map projections that then represent the distances well. But if we want to represent the whole world on a flat map, then we need to make some compromises. Mm. So map projections is a cool topic. Uh, maybe we can open this comic quickly to get us started. So maybe Web Mercator is the project that we see most often, but it's all geographers should hate it because it makes, for example, well, everything that's at the equator, very small, for example, Africa, if you compare it to the size of Greenland, for example, and even Finland is like super stretched and tall country. So the areas get distorted and it also then distorts people's kind of perception of, of the world and well, maybe even power relations, but at least kind of the the sizes, uh, the relative areas of different continents. Uh, then there are these kind of conformal uh, projections. I don't know if there's Robinson. Uh, so dif different types of projections that then uh, uh, somehow balance between the errors between in kind of area, direction, uh, and so on. Okay, so then how to define coordinate reference systems in Python or on the computer using GeoPandas. Uh, 
Geopandas uses this library called PyProject um, in the background. So you might need to check the documentation from here. Uh, but things are nowadays quite well implemented in Geopandas. So this lesson, if you have followed this course maybe two or three years ago, this lesson has changed quite a lot. Uh, I would say that things have become more easy. Uh, but yeah, let's let's then see in practice how we can. Oops. What did I now do? Sorry, it's not a good day with these. Zoom today. Okay, now I should be back in this coordinate reference systems lesson. So yes, so let's see how we can uh, handle and manipulate uh, the CRS definitions and also how we can reproject data from one uh, projection to the other. So I want to make one important distinction. distinction where uh, people often make, make mistakes when handling spatial data. So you can define the coordinate reference system for a layer. So set the CRS for a layer. For example, that this layer has CRS VGS 84 latitude longitude coordinates. But that uh, requires that you actually know that the coordinates are already in this EPSG 4326. VGS84. Uh, if you just define, make the CRS definition without even looking at the coordinates, things can go super wrong because if you have coordinates from, let's say, some Finnish coordinate reference system and then you define it as something that works in the United States, uh, you won't be able to, uh, the, the data will be in a wrong place because the coordinates and then the coordinate reference system definition don't match. Uh, so if you define or set CRS, you need to know what is actually the CRS of the data. Sometimes you might get a shape file that has coordinates. So you have the shapely or the polygon objects in place, but the projection file is lost. So if you know what is the CRS, you can define it. Then the other uh, process is to re-project uh, re data. So that assumes that you have data which has a CRS definition, and then we project from one system to the other. So those two things are different. And I hope you understand the uh, difference of those two processes, defining and reprojecting projections. You, so let's get uh, going, mm, importing GeoPandas, and I'm now reading in this Europe borders shapefile uh, into a data frame. Uh, nothing new there. And then I call this data.crs uh, command. So a geo data frame will have a CRS attribute that contains information about the coordinate reference system. And you can already see quite a lot of information in there. We have this EPSG uh, four tree. 26 that represents the VGS 84 system that's mentioned in there. Uh, we have latitude and longitude. Mm, so geodetic meaning that on the surface of the earth. So a geographic coordinate system covering the whole earth from uh, pole to pole. Uh, it has a specific datum that represents the uh, earth surface surface and so on. Mm. So this is then we could add this to the steps when reading in data, you want to see the first lines of, of it, you want to plot it on a map and often you might want to check the CRS to know what's happening. Mm. And then there's a lot of information online about these different uh, uh, coordinate reference systems and the way in which they are then defined. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, continue a bit and check the values in our geometry column. And here, by looking at them, you can see that there are these decimal degrees um, values located somewhere in Europe. 
based on these. So Finland is something 2460. Uh, so based on these coordinates, you could already tell that it's uh, in VGS 84 and located somewhere in these. European latitudes. Mm. Then uh, we continue. So starting point is that we have the data. It has a CRS definition. So no problem with that. Uh, next, we would want to reproject the data. And there are easy tools for that. but uh, Let's first make a backup. So data.vgs84 equals data.copy. So we make a hard copy of our original geodata frame. And then data, I replace this original uh, variable to CRS. And here, there are different ways uh, of defining this. But this EPSG codes is uh, a good, good tool to work with. So for representing the European borders, uh, these latitude and longitude coordinates are not perfect because we are located in the north. And then if you plot it on the map, it will kind of get squeezed if zooming in only on that area. Mm. So a recommended, recommended uh, projection is this Lambert Azimutal equal area projection. So it will, uh, the areas on the map will be uh, relatively, relative to each other, correct size. And there is this EPSG code um, 3035 related to that uh, equal area projection defined in here. So this, this website will have all the EPSG codes and related coordinate reference systems uh, defined. Mm, so let's use that 3035 to CRS. Uh, and now data.crs. We can see that the CRS attribute has also changed. Um, you have this name refers to the European area. Uh, there's the name and so on. Mm. And indeed, it's this uh, equal equal area projection. So to actually understand what we now did to our data, uh, let's create some maps. But actually, before that, even I will show this data dot head. So now you can see that these uh, x y values have also changed. So we have reprojected the data from this latitude longitude to this. Uh, coordinate uh, values that correspond to this azimuth equal area projection. Mm. All right. So then uh, in the next code block, there's some code ready to save us some time. We will import matplotlib and create this uh, two panel uh, figure object to plot the original data and then the projected data on the map. We have this data VGS84 in memory. Mm, we can plot that. This is now a quick intro of plotting using GeoPandas, uh, but pretty much is the same thing as we learned in GeoPandas lesson six. So we plot the VGS84 uh, data frame to the first panel and we can also change uh, the color if you want uh, so that we can distinguish the two maps. So base color changes the color of the polygon as gray. Uh, for this first subplot, so AX1, we can set title oops, VGS84 okay and then uh, same thing for the projected data. So data.plot ax equals ax2. Uh, so to the second subplot, we can also give that, I think blue is anyway the default color, but 
and then change it in here using these mat matplotlib um, arguments. And then title for the whole figure, uh, or no, sorry, for this second subplot uh, set title. Oops. I'll just write equal area to save some time. Uh, then I have these lines that will then uh, define how the, that is plotted in one to one aspect ratio and then tight layout. So original data, three projected data, first one to AX1, second one to AX2, and then we continue. Mm, so this is now one practical example of just if you're visualizing data, good to pay attention to the projection. And then definitely if you're calculating areas, calculating distances, you should have a suitable um, projection for the region you are studying. Chat window is there. I see no urgent questions. Uh, so that's basically it. Here, the key thing is indeed uh, we had this two CRS, and you need to know you need to have a definition in place in order to project, and then using these EPSG codes, we can then uh, project between uh, projections. And then there was this. Uh, geodata frame dot CRS to check the de definition. It's basically those two things that you need, but then there's often something, some hassle that might happen when working with projections. So just good to stop and uh, verify that you are, you know, which is the original one, you know, to which you are pre-projecting to. And especially if we then want to plot multiple layers on the same map, they need to be, of course, in the same CRS so that they plot that the coordinates are in the same same uh, coordinate space. Mm, if you want, well, yeah, maybe we want to save uh, the output to disk. It's used in the next optional section. Uh, so as a recap, we have this data uh, to file. And you can use the readily defined output file path. So now you have on disk this uh, reprojected layer. This is maybe a good practice to include if you are reprojecting data to some custom or very uh, specific coordinate reference systems. It's not a bad idea to include that information already in the file name, just in case if you lose the projection layer or if you just want to know which file you are starting to work with. Depends a bit on the case. Uh, yeah, so this is a big topic, but the lesson is rather short. Uh, we have then, this is maybe a bit, dives a bit deeper into this CRS uh, object from PyProj library. So I will uh, walk through this next section still. Uh, and let's see if we have time for this. Uh, check your understanding where the task would be to project some um, maps of the Earth, or maybe we can do it together. But yeah, let's let's continue a little while uh, before then wrapping up and introducing the exercise. Mm. All right, so. The next section is a bit more technical, uh, but I hope you are still following. I might start from this. Uh, I went to this spatialreference.org where I had the definition of this EPSG 3035 with the basic information. And you can see that there's then this list of different ways of representing this uh, projection. Uh, so there is, for, ex um, for example, um, we have this well known text format. So this is the definition of the projection as it will be written 
uh, on disk. Uh, but, but then there is, for example, this is kind of the old format that you, you might see. So this is discouraged to use nowadays. But you can, for example, see from here that the unit of measurement is meters. Uh, and it uses this ellipsoid and so on and so forth. Uh, we could check the same information for uh, if we go to see. Let's check this. VGS84, so the most common CRS you will find. So for that, uh, if we have the well-known text representation, it's a bit more simple. It, it defines the datum. There's the author, authority, uh, uh, meridian, units are degrees, and so on and so forth. So this is actually how we then write the CRS definition related to the coordinates that we have on disk. Mm. And how to interact with that in Python, we can import this for CRS class. Oops, did I import? Mm. And then if you run after importing you can run this script and you can already see that you get a warning that you will likely lose important projection information when converting to a pro e for string, I think it reads. So here uh, I continue working with the geodata frame. I take the CRS default definition of the CRS. Then using this CRS object, I create a CRS object out of it in the next one. I create a CRS object and then convert that to an EPSG code. Uh, here, I take a CRS object and convert it to this PROI4 representation, so the little text string that had these plus signs. And then finally, uh, I take the CRS object definition in PyProj and convert that to well-known text. So that is the default uh, text representation of these CRS definitions at this moment. The, the following code cell prints all these. So you can see different ways of accessing this uh, projection information. This might be useful if you want to just print it to a separate log file, for example. So simple one in here, if we just print the CRS of the geodata frame, CRS object, I think it's actually the same as the well-known text. EPSG code as only the code, then this old ProE4 string, and then again, the well-known text. Mm. So I think last year when we organized this course, you first had to had a layer with a well-known text CRS in order to write it to a file. But I think this year the packages have updated so that we don't need to care about it if we have have the CRS uh, as a CRS object or well-known text, things should work. Mm. So our current layer is, uh, well, we can continue with this data object, CRS. We had this projected data. So if you check the data type of this one, so when we have a geodata frame, so then this uh, data.crs is actually this PyProje CRS object. This is can be useful information then if you want to further analyze or get information out of this object. Mm. Okay. Might be, well, yeah, maybe I'll show this one still. So if you would be, kind of starting from scratch. So you create, for example, you create some data in pandas and add the geometries and want to then define the CRS. So you can also define it if you have this EPSG code at hand. Uh, so if then, sorry, I now already lost. So we can use the CRS object and it has a method from uh, EPSG, which takes the EPSG number as input, 30, 35, 
So like this, you can create a new CRS object uh, just based on the EPSG information. And then you could, for example, do something like this data dot CRS equals this one, if you would have a data set that doesn't have. So this is here, I would be defining the coordinate reference system, but do this only if you are certain about the coordinate reference system of the input data. Uh, then let's see if this is useful. Mm. Well, maybe to continue, if we have this CRS object, you can then parse some useful information from there, because this is, of course, quite cryptic. So you might use this in some printout, for example, if you're looping over the data and printing to the screen uh, that you have the correct uh, CRS in place data dot uh, coordinate system, for example. Oops, I am missing the CRS, CRS. Mm, well, this print out, maybe if I print it out actually. So it can tell me that it's a Cartesian, so kind of two-dimensional coordinate system. Uh, and then, for example, data.crs. Uh, dot, there's this area of use dot bounds. So this is just to exemplify that then in this PyProj CRS, you have multiple ways of fetching information of the coordinate reference system and its definitions. Mm. Finally, if we have this data.crs, uh, so if you do this 2wkt command, so then you can get this, you can see that it's a string object, so you can get the well-known text representation of the coordinate reference system like this. All right, this. Mm, I think I'll leave it at that. There's still some more detailed information of recognizing uh, if you don't have a CRS definition, you might try to use the CRS object for detecting one. Uh, but I would want to finish the lesson with talking about global map projections in the interest of time. And also it's half past five, so I bet you don't have too much energy mm, so maybe we will do only one of these together, uh, spend some time on it with those who are still, still with me. Uh, so in this last part of the lesson, uh, we would want to explore uh, a couple of different projections uh, for visualizing or representing the whole, whole world or uh, administ ad administrative areas, country borders on a map. Uh, and if you want to play around uh, with these on your own time, you can see then documentation and hints from, for example, these sources. But we have this final input data file uh, under lesson two folder. It's from Natural Earth, Earth uh, shape file of uh, administrative uh, borders, uh, so country borders. And if I want to read that in, I can do admin. Uh, gpd read file file path and then i have the input crs crs is there uh, so let's let's still use five minutes to kind of wrap up your thinking about coordinate reference systems um, so i would ask you to Plot, plot this data. So you can basically do admin.plot. Mm. This cell will then just kind of set the figure, uh, figure size for all the consecutive figures. So uh, admin.plot, plot that. And if you have the energy, go and look for one uh, 
one or your favorite global map projection. You could, for example, find, I don't know, maybe you can find the EPSG code for the Robinson projection or at least Eckert 4 is one projection that's quite good for representing areas. So try to reproject the data uh, and plot it in some other projection than the default, uh, which is VGS84. And let's, I'll give you four minutes and then I will show a solution and then we'll wrap up the lesson. Okay. Okay, that's four minutes. I started to improvise in the background. Never mind these code cells that are on the screen. Um, so I will go through now uh, some steps in here. And on the web pages, you can see then more examples. So idea was to read in these administrative borders, checking the CRS, uh, setting the parameters for the plot so we get nice big maps. Uh, if you just do a default plot, you get this VGS84 uh, axis and the map is plotted in there. Uh, and as you can see, for example, then it, yeah, well, it's a bit flat, but not, not the worst. Worst visualize, visualization there is. So I asked you to find information of some EPSG codes or other definitions and based on this, uh, this part of the lesson, reproject the data and plot it. Uh, I suggested uh, as the first option, Web Mercator. So let's do that because it has an EPSG code. Actually, many of these um, global maps, then you need to define it using the well-known text, but that's actually a good good thing to do. Just put that down so we don't get distracted. Uh, okay, so we need first the definition. Uh, I'm doing it now following the lesson materials. So in the CRS uh, class, we have the method from oops, EPSG, and then we can pass the EPSG code 3785 in there and then uh, admin to CRS web mercator uh, plot all in one line. So there we get uh, the typical, well, Google Maps representation of the earth where you have these poles are twisted, but then it's, if you zoom close, it's quite, quite okay. But then if you zoom out, it indeed uh, doesn't give maybe the correct view of the world. So have a definition as a CRS object, pass it to the two CRS uh, method and then plot the data. We could add titles and make it nicer, but I'll skip that. Then uh, a totally improvised uh, example. So bear with me if this doesn't work as planned. But I googled, uh, I wanted to plot Robinson, which I think we don't have in the don't have in the materials on the website. And also on this epsg.io site, you have these uh, definitions. So it has this ESRI code, which would work in ArcMap, but we are not in ArcMap, so let's not use that. Then there is also this PROJI4 definition that we could use, but then there is also this well-known text representation. So I'm now totally testing if this would work. So I pasted this uh, definition uh, text, put it to Python into a variable. As it has multiple lines, I surround it with three uh, quotation marks. Then I create um, a CRS object, which I want to check. 
first, um, seems promising. And then after that, I have this uh, CRS from WKT uh, defined. Then I do admin uh, to CRS Robinson and then plot. Yeah, looks fine. Uh, I could to do remove this frame because of course the Robinson, the borders are for real kind of elliptical and we don't have this these uh, stark borders. So maybe I'll just do that still to demonstrate. So if I do plt dot uh, axis, set it to off, replot it. So then I get this. And if I would have plotted some polygon that represents the ocean, so it would probably be something of this shape. So I think on the web pages, uh, so this is the end of the notebook. You learn to reproject data and then to kind of hopefully got started of understanding how the CRS object works. So we can define our own objects and then convert our data, create uh, nice maps on the fly. On the web pages under map projections uh, at the very end, mm, you can see examples of different projections. So there is uh, VGS84, so the default input uh, CRS. Then there's the web Mercator. Then we have Eckert4. Uh, and you can see that here I have used this proji for definition. I should update it maybe to use the well-known text representation. And finally, we found this nice uh, proji for definition for an orthographic globe. And I have centered it to somewhere around Helsinki. So a Finland-centered orthographic globe you can also plot. Plot in Python using GeoPandas and then managing the coordinate reference system using PyProj. Excellent. So um, that's now all the core contents of lesson two. There is one extra notebook in the CSC notebooks environment that contains this page. Uh, I won't go, go through it in detail, but this page will show you how to create geodata frame from scratch. So if you have if you don't have any input data, you want to just kind of put definitions of uh, geometries uh, inside a geodata frame. So you can do that. So there's this geodata frame constructor. Uh, and then it should have a geometry column. And then using our shapely skills, we could create a, a polygon from a list of coordinate pairs put it in there. This is actually the Senate square in Helsinki. And once we have this shapely object, you can then add that shapely object into this geodata frame with one row of data. Mm, you could of course add additional columns, for example, name of the location, uh, and then define CRS and uh, write it to file. So feel free to go through this in more detail. And there's a couple of check your understanding questions at the end there as well. Mm, final note on this. So if you have a pandas data frame with a geometry column, you can also then uh, create a geodata frame out of that. And I think we have some hints for that in the exercise two landing page. OK, uh, so before I lose all of you, uh, I'll quickly describe the exercise. Mm, then next, but to wrap up lesson two, we learned how to manage uh, geometries in GeoPandas, uh, interact with data, and then to understand, uh, define, reproject uh, data from one coordinate reference system to the other and plot, plot those nice maps. So those are the core contents of lesson two.